cannot wait to get rid of that thing for good. But today, I got to move it so I can install my new Dirt Racks crash bars. These are the first that have been available on the market at all for the Gen 3. And huge thanks to Dirt Racks. I think I'm probably one of the first people to get my hands on these. I've also got a set of Dirt Racks on the Tenere 700 here. Back when I had my Gen 2 KLR 650, I had the rear or side set on there. Uh, that's gonna be pretty similar to what I'm gonna be putting on the rear of the Gen 3 here, and those always did really well for me. That's gonna be this portion here. And then these guys here protect the front, of course. As you can see, they are a little bit heavier material than the sidebars. These don't really need to be anything too crazy. The front is really where you're gonna take uh, most of the blow. Welds all look good on here. Looks like we've got some little luggage hoops just in case you wanna use those. The Gen 2 bars did not have that. Finish on these I believe is a powder coat and it's kind of a hammer finish. Uh, we've got mounting brackets here all welded on. This piece is gonna go kind of up underneath that plastic black cap on the top side of the fairing. That'll of course go on the motor plate. And this bracket right here will connect the two. Only two pieces of hardware for the front, you reuse everything else. We've got hardware for the rear, which is a little bit more extensive. So with the skid plate removed, the next thing that I've gotta do here is remove the front two motor mount bolts here that go through the frame. And we do have two other motor mounts, one in the back here and then one up top. So this shouldn't shift around too much. Top one came right out, bottom one is kind of hung up. Yeah, seems like that was just kind of caught up on the threads a little bit. So just kind of spinning and pulling got it out. If yours is so stuck that when you're trying to unthread it, it seems like it's mashing the threads up. I would say don't do that. Get something underneath here to kind of reposition so it comes out clean. Don't lose your little nylon washer. There we go. So it just pops off like that. And this is supposed to stay in the fairing. Of course, it seems like it never does. So pull this back off and then stick it back in the fairing before you try to reassemble anything. Otherwise, it won't go well. So then this is the bolt that we're after. As you can see, it doesn't really do anything as far as holding the fairing on, and it does protrude past the fairing slightly. Uh, however, that bracket that we're gonna be mounting here is gonna be sticking off this direction. And I'm not gonna lie, that does make me a little bit nervous. However, you should be getting plenty of support from that mounting bracket down on the frame there and also wrapping around and then building off of the other supports on the other side. So really there shouldn't be all that much of a possibility of the bracket getting bent into the plastic, but it is something that I kind of want to take a look at once we get this mounted and something that I will definitely be keeping a close eye on in the field to see if I have any issues. If I do, I will let you guys know down in the comment box below there. So before I get this mounted up, throw these guys on a scale for you in case you're interested looks like the fronts alone will add about 12 and a half pounds so of course everyone's entitled to their own opinion and I would love to hear yours down below but I think crash protection is something that is 100% necessary on a bike that I'm gonna take through pretty crazy trails I guess if you are only planning on staying on the road or you just really don't think you're ever gonna drop your KLR, and that 12 pounds is weight that you really wanna keep off the bike, then I mean, I, I guess that's up to you. But for me personally, the added weight of crash protection is well worth it. So to get this installed, I'm gonna grab the bolt and washer that came with the front bars here. Uh, if you're interested, apparently my camera's not gonna focus on it. They are 8.8. .8. I do have a little bit of blue Loctite on it. Uh, if you get confused, these are just a hair longer than the stock bolts that came out of here. I'm going to install this in the bracket and I'm gonna guide the bottom portion that's gonna line up with the holes in the frame and the motor mount up from the bottom like so. And then I'm just gonna line the top bolt up here and thread it in. At this point, that should be well balanced enough and I can just let it go. I'm gonna grab my other crash bar and my other fastener and mount this the same way on the other side here. So now I've just gotta line up all my holes down here and throw the factory bolts through from the opposite side. Kinda of feel like I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing daylight from the other side. So I might have to loosen that bolt up and maybe lift up on that crash bar a bit. Ah, 
Oh, no problem. And you guys were worried. Since I wasn't over there to line that other side of the crash bar up, it seems like it just kind of pushed it out of the way a little bit, which honestly I'm not too worried about. That one I should be able to manipulate a little bit easier than this side. There we go. No trouble at all. Just a matter of kind of shimmying things around until it lines up. And honestly, I don't know if anything really was misaligned. It might just be that this side is kind of hanging off of the bike, kind of misaligning things. So, a lot going on there. Just take your time, be patient, and it should fall together pretty easily. And back on this side, I think what I'm gonna do is actually just take this bolt out. Hmm, yeah, much easier. I wonder if maybe you wanna start with the bottom ones? I don't know. Seems like this worked okay too. So here we've got the boomerang bracket. This is gonna be directional because you've got the countersunk holes here for the matching conical fasteners. So those get installed this direction and this is actually gonna be installed upside down with the point pointed forward. Get my black nylock nut and washer ready to go. Put this through the hole. Put a washer on. And a nylock nut. And do the same over here. As long as everything is left loose, this lines up absolutely no problem at all. So I'm just gonna hit each one of those bolts a little bit at a time until everything kind of falls into place. And since I would much rather have to come back and tighten some of this stuff up, even though I don't think that'll be a problem, I'm gonna take it easy on these bolts. No sense in snapping anything off or stripping anything out. So it's probably gonna be a little bit hard to see here. Uh, I pulled off the bottom nut because I'm gonna throw some blue Loctite on these. Oh, this camera. I guess that's about as clear as we're gonna get. So there's plenty of bolt there. However, these nuts are a locking nut. They're not a nylock nut, they've got little teeth. There we go. Thank you, camera. They've got little teeth that are supposed to grab the threads, and I have more than enough confidence that there is plenty of holding power there as far as holding everything together, uh, but it seems like maybe those teeth are kind of to the point where the bolt starts to taper down a little bit. And this may be overkill, but it's also super easy to do, so I'm just gonna throw some blue Loctite on the threads. So I'm just gonna do the same thing up top here. So with everything else snugged up, we're back to the boomerang bracket up here. I'm just gonna start to snug these up. There is quite a bit of play up here. I'm just gonna kinda do a little bit at a time and then center this so it looks good. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm putting Loctite on these two. <laughs> Well, there we go, not bad at all. I've kind of always wanted a wraparound crash bar on a KLR. I just had the kind of short side ones on the old one. And I don't know, there's just kind of something about it. It makes it look a little bit more like a tank. I did mention earlier that I was going to kind of take a look at this bracket here to see how close it got to the plastic. And I mean, it's, it's close. Uh, I don't really think it's gonna be an issue unless you get in one heck of an accident. I think just dropping this on the ground probably isn't gonna be a big deal. That would take one heck of a wallop to get that pressed into the side of the bike. I mean, these things feel more than solid and I don't see any flex going on there at all. I'm moving the bike quite a bit, but that's about it. I'm not a huge fan of how this covers up the KLR logo, but it is just a KLR, a, a definitely a, a pretty cool looking KLR. I really, really, really like these Gen 3s. That's such a good looking motorcycle, but not really a big deal. Obviously, like I said earlier, crash protection is A1 priority, looks come second. Uh, I think the crash bars do look cool on the bike. I guess let me know what you guys think down in the comment box below and let me know what you think of this and if this is gonna be an issue. So all there is left to do up here is put this thing back in place. So with the front all buttoned back up, we'll move it to the back here. And before I install anything, put these on the scale. Looks like we're at about four pounds. So we hold this up, looks like we're gonna have to remove that back fastener on the rack and the front one on the passenger foot pegs. So that one will be getting replaced with this fastener here. And the rear one will be getting replaced with the longer one. So I'm gonna load both of these up. 
and then put them through the brackets. Line everything up. And I suppose I didn't show you that, but these do use the same grade hardware as the front did. We will get these tightened down, and I think this one I'm going to snug up first because the one in the front has a slot where this was a hole. She is ready to ride and uh, I guess ready to crash now. Gotta say I'm pretty happy with how everything went together. Uh, front really didn't take too long and wasn't too involved obviously. You do have to remove some motor mount bolts but I promise it's not nearly as scary as it sounds. Really all goes together pretty smooth. Uh, the back obviously super simple. Really like how all of it comes together. Uh, I think it looks good on the bike. It does look uh, a little bit tankish, of course, uh, with the, the full wraparound bars in the front. Maybe that's what some people like, and other people probably aren't such a fan of that. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I think it looks good. Uh, I don't necessarily mind having slightly smaller bars like I've got on the Tenere. Uh, I do kind of like that, and obviously if you're looking to get some weight savings, that's definitely uh, an option that you might want to look at. However, I don't know that there's going to be an option like that for the KLR. Pretty much stuck with either this or just the goofy little loop bars down here and the, in my opinion anyway, useless light bar bracket. I guess that's up to you in the type of writing that you're going to do. Me personally, I'm going to feel one heck of a lot better about having these on here. I do plan on probably doing some single track with this next year. And now I think I'm definitely ready to do that and feel pretty good about these bars. If I have any major issues or there is any destruction after a crash, then I will make sure to make a video on this updating you guys. But like I said, I've used the Dirt Racks bars on the Tenere, crashed that a couple times already. Uh, never had a problem with the ones on the Gen 2 KLR. So I have a lot of confidence in these. If you guys want to pick a set of these up, take a look down in the description. There will be a link for them. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment box below. If this video was helpful to you, make sure and let me know. Hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, or if you want to see any one of these three or all three of these bikes out on the trail in the beautiful Wisconsin woods, I put out a video at least once a week. So hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell after you're subscribed and it won't let you know anytime I put a video out. Other than that, guys, take care. Stay safe. Stay swanky. Get out and enjoy this beautiful world if you can. And hey, if you can't, check out some more of these videos now.